All right, everybody, if you're anything like me, you've seen Twitter go absolutely bonkers about this announcement. Canelo versus Jamel Charlo, September 30 in Vegas. Now, I saw Canelo post a fight, and I'm like, oh, finally, they've finally announced Jamal Charlo and Canelo Alvarez, and I'm like, oh, they've stuffed up the artwork there. That's actually Jamel. No, in fact, he is actually fighting Jamel Charlo for the undisputed title at 168. So what does that look like from here? For me after reading everything that I have and seen what I've seen over the last couple of weeks and months, Jamel was given till September 30 to fight Tim Zhu or vacate the belts. This fight's on September 30. It is the Undisputed versus Undisputed, which is technically correct on September 30, but the 1st of October, he's a vacated ex-world champion who is now going to be fighting and challenging for the 168 belts at super middleweight. So it is undisputed versus undisputed, but the next day he will lose his belts and be stripped. So that's what it's looking like at the moment, unless there's something with the organisations which I don't know about, and uh, which is very likely in this sport. As we've seen, his brothers had the WBC belt for almost three years <laughs> and fought once. So uh, look, things can happen, and I really hope that's not the case, because Tim Zhu, as we know, has waited almost 18 months to fight Jamel Charlo. There were was an announcement imminent from Zoo's management this week. We did hear that that was all but done. Announcement shortly, looking around mid-October, and it was all firmed up, ready to go. Uh, there was a slight hold-up on Charlo's end, and it turns out now that short hold-up was in fact him trying to get through uh, that deal with Canelo Alvarez, which looks now, well, it is signed and official September 30 in Vegas, which would see him vacate those belts should the laws fall the way they fall. But it is boxing, it is business, and we'll soon see. What does that look like for the 154 division? Well, there are a few options for Tim Zhu. If I was him, I'd be going straight over to the WBC champion as well and fighting Brian Mendoza, getting both those lineal belts. And uh, you will see people like uh, Murda Zalev. He'll fight for a vacant belt. Um, who else have we got in there? Let me take a quick look. You've got M Madrimov versus Kurbanov. He'd fight for the WBA. And then, yeah, Murda Zalev and Kolke for the IBF. And they'd... Those belts would both be vacant. And Tim, you'd think, would either A, be fighting, like I said, um, Brian Mendoza, or having a look at maybe like a Josh Kelly from England, or even Jesus Ramos, who's about to fight Sergio Garcia. If he wins in a couple of weeks' time, that might elevate him up the rankings a little bit more, and it could be that he fights him as well. So there's plenty of options there for him, but the one that he wants was undisputed. The one that was promised was undisputed. The name he wants is Charlo. It's interesting because a lot of people were yelling at Tim saying, mate, you're crazy. Why would you fight over these Tony Harrison fights and the Carlos Ocampo when you've got the undisputed sitting right there for you to take? All you got to do is just turn up, beat Charlo, and you've got him. Could you imagine if he never fought Tony Harrison? Could you imagine if he never made that statement on Carlos Ocampo? He would be Tim Zhu that hasn't had a fight in over a year and didn't exactly set the world on fire with Terrell Gachet. That would have been the last fight. So realistically, what he's done I'm, is exactly right. And again, he's absolutely nailed it. And uh, he's put his star firmly on the world scene, especially at 154, but across all the superstars of the sport. After a campo, we saw all those tweets come out. Bud Crawford, a few others all jumping on going, this guy's absolutely deadly. I know Sean Porter had plenty to say about how great Tim was and, and just how far he has increased his skill level over the, first, over the last 18 months. So it's going to be an interesting six months for Tim. I would dare say, given the names that he's sort of floating around in that 154, I don't think there's anything big enough to light up a huge Vegas fight. So you would probably see Tim, well, he'll get elevated to Lemuel champion. So after that, you'd see him probably do a defense back in Australia. And I can't see him going overseas anytime soon. That's just looking at it from a surface level day one as we get the information about Canelo and Charlo. I just like many of you guys, are trying to get my head around it and see how it actually is going to unfold. I'm sure there's going to be a ton of news over the next few days from the boxing organisations around Jamel. There's no official statement as of right now that he's actually, in fact, going to vacate, but technically that's what's going to happen. Uh, and then you will see, as I said, Mendoza and Tim go back up to limital cha lineal champions. Tough word. And uh, then the other guys will fight for vacant belts and then there becomes potentially four champions in the division and then 
the long road starts for Tim, which I think, in sense, it's obviously great to be undisputed, and he is fighting an absolute weapon in Jamel should he win, and that's a great victory. But it would be nice to see him go and collect all those belts individually as well because he can absolutely do that. I think he beats anyone in the division, and I don't see a threat outside of Jamel as the only true challenge for Tim. I think he is clearly number two. And I think we get some exciting fights coming up over the next 12 to 18 to three years in the 154 because Tim will absolutely campaign at that. I think if we saw him go undisputed with Jamel, you might get one or two defences and then see him pop up to middleweight. Maybe at 154, he can bounce up and down and jump between the two should he need to. There's a few options there for him, but we'll see how this unfolds over the next uh, couple of weeks anyway because knowing Tim, he likes to stay busy. He's had two fights in 2023 already. And I know he was getting ready as he's poolside currently in Dubai for an October fight with Jamel, which means I reckon maybe early November you'll see his first title defence as the lineal WBO world champion. And uh, I would say that's going to be in Australia. But let's watch this space. There's surely there's no other way that he can fight Jamel now. Like, and even if you were Tim, would you? Because there's just empty promises for so long. And he is risking his career, he's risking his age, he's risking miles. He's, there's a lot that goes into it. Obviously, that camp the first time was like $250,000. I think that was what was reported for his last camp over in the US when Jamel did his, cha- did his hand and all that was for nothing. So, look, it's... Um, a watch this space situation, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So like, subscribe. I'll keep you updated. I'm going to try and get some info inside Team Zoo as well. And uh, the second I've got that, it'll be right here on this page. So make sure you jump on, follow, like it, share it, and I'll see you soon right here on the Punch Podcast.